What if I told you that 80% of your diseases can be prevented not by expensive medicines, not by surgeries, but by something as simple as the food on your plate? The reason is very simple. The most of the illnesses that we are seeing today, the heart disease, type 2 diabetes, even fatty liver, or even some of the cancers don't appear overnight. They are built over the years by the food that we eat and the lifestyle choices that we make. That's why in this video, I want to tell you why food is fuel beyond that it is medicine so let's explore how the food that you eat works in the body and why so many indians are falling sick for so many illnesses today and let's debunk some of the biggest diet myths today that we are following and also let's break down what are those simple habits that we can start following today so that we can prevent these uh, lifestyle illnesses and let's figure out why food is a very powerful medicine You have heard the phrase food is medicine but let me ask you if your food is really medicine why are so many people still sick the answer is food can be medicine but it can also be a poison let me discuss one single story i just saw a 34 year old it professional he wasn't overweight but he had early diabetes and fatty liver disease and his diet is polished white rice twice a day sugary breakfast most of the time it's cereals and tea four times a day and snacks in between we made one simple change which is changing the meal plate replacing half of his plate with vegetables and changing the cereal into different forms for example different kinds of millets different kinds of grains and his sugar stabilized over time and he felt better in terms of energy mood and sleep moving to patient story number 2 where a 50 year old woman came to me with very high cholesterol borderline blood pressure and she thought medicines were the only way but after reducing fried foods and including more sprouts and changing the different types of grains and changing ending the meal earlier in the day she would she was able to cut down her blood pressure medications by about a half that's why i say food is medicine and many diseases like type 2 diabetes and heart disease can actually receive remission and they can help with weight loss Let's break down the science behind how food works in the body. What are refined carbs? We often hear this word. Refined carbs are more like maida, refined flours or even sugars. These are not very good to the body because they increase the insulin levels, gives immediate energy and immediately it crashes. If we consume these refined carbohydrates over a long period of time, these energy spikes and crashes are terrible. They can increase fasting insulin levels and also put you in in a state of insulin resistance but if we can replace these refined carbohydrates with more whole grains legumes and nuts and seeds our body will use food as fuel for energy in in fact we'll have sustained levels of energy throughout the day think of fats like grease in your body and if it's a good grease like nuts fish olive oil or olives then your engine runs smoothly but if it's a bad grease for example like trans fats or too much saturated fatty acids or even fried snacks the energy systems clog now let's talk about fats we always have heard about fats being bad to the body and in fact we even heard like 10 years ago fats are actually bad for your heart health but over a period of time as more and more evidence and data that we gathered today we understand fats work very differently in the body they could be bad kind of fats for example trans fats hydrogenated fatty acids or consumption of higher saturated fats which are bad for the body but in fact when we consume fats in this form for example nuts seeds olives avocados olive oil these are the kinds of fats that actually nourish the body they are actually important to keep our uh, body systems in place and they are very good for our hormonal health similarly there are different types of protein sources that are available depending on the choices that we make we either end up eating vegetarian sources of protein or even animal sources of protein whether it's animal source or in, or even plant source it should be clean unprocessed but if we end up with stored form of protein sources for example stored form of processed meat that is harmful to the body but if you are consuming grass fed clean source of protein that will nourish your body again there are a lot of comparisons between plant and animal based uh, sources of protein if you are consuming protein sources that is having good amino acid balance and it is loose in rich then your body will function at its best 
Now coming to inflammation, this is a very big term. Think about inflammation as a small fire within your body. If you keep uh, eating fried foods, sugars, processed red meat, then this inflammation grows and it damages your blood vessels and also affect the heart health. But if you add them and replace these inflamed food with anti-inflammatory foods, for example, uh, omega-3 rich foods or nuts and diversified sources of fruits and vegetables, then it will support your body, support your immune system and keeps your body in a very low inflammatory state. That is when your body actually thrives. Coming to gut-brain axis, even your gut bacteria can speak to your brain. That's why when we eat certain types of foods, we feel better. But when we eat foods that destroy the gut bacteria, it will work against us and we keep putting on weight or even our mood is disrupted and we feel depressed. So that's why food is fuel, not just for the body, but for the mind as well. We can decide to choose different types of food sources to either nourish our gut bacteria or even destroy them. So if we can feed our gut bacteria well, then that will decide how our mood is, how, how our mental well-being is. So all these components of nutrition are very important, keeping the body less inflamed and also having diversified forms of gut bacteria, fungi and viruses and having good sources of protein, carbs and fats. Now let's talk about Indian problem. Why are we the diabetes capital of the world? Over 101 million people in India have diabetes and 136 million people have pre-diabetes and more number of people have fatty liver disease. And these are not very old people in India. These are the youngest population that is 20s to 30s. Why so young population in India have diabetes, heart disease and fatty liver disease at a very young age? It's because what our grandparents ate, we are not eating today. We are replacing whole grains like millets or even vegetables with tea, coffee, maida biscuit or even fried foods. That's the reason why we are harboring more diseases today in younger population. And not just that, people, most of the Indian population have normal BMIs. They look normal, they are having normal normal body weights but inside they hold a lot of visceral adiposity and this visceral adiposity is the root cause of all the diseases lifestyle diseases that we are seeing today this has been a cultural shift earlier deep fried foods are very occasional today these foods are available every day and the snacks are replaced by roasted chickpeas or nuts with the junk and the packaged foods our traditional foods are already medicine for example millets lower sugar spikes and curd improves gut bacteria and use of different spices for example garlic turmeric act like natural antibacterial agents even bring half of these food products into today's time or if we start eating them today they act like medicine for us so it's just about replacing the foods that are using today like if the western foods are replaced with more indian foods i think half of the problems will come down you have probably heard the saying an ounce of prevention is worth the pound of cure nowhere is this more true than the food and lifestyle let me give you some examples. A massive study called Diabetes Prevention Program tracked people at high risk for diabetes. Those who included lifestyle and nutritional changes reduced their disease risk by 58%, which was compared to metformin, which only gave 31% reduction. Lifestyle really worked twice as much. Even in India, there was a study called Indian Diabetes Prevention Program where simple changes like eating healthier and walking for at least 30 minutes a day could cut down the diabetes risk by 28% over three years. That's almost the same benefit as medicine but without side effects. And this doesn't stop at diabetes. Same principles when applied to heart disease, hypertension or even certain cancers, WHO and Cleveland Clinic both say up to 90% of the heart diseases can be prevented with the right diet and lifestyle changes. Imagine if three out of four heart attacks and strokes could simply be avoided and no pill in the world can give you that level of protection and prevention across entire population. That's why food prevention works better and prevention with foods works so well because medicine just targets a single pathway. One drug lowers blood pressure, one drug lowers blood sugar, another drug lowers cholesterol. Unlike change in dietary patterns which can work on all the pathways and work with the root causes that can reduce your weight excess weight gain that can fix your gut health that can fix your mood sleep reduce blood sugars and blood pressures that's why eating better including more fiber 
including better healthy fats, changing the kind of grains that we eat, including more vegetables and more fruits, can have overall effect and will work on multiple pathways and reduce the all disease risk. Now let's look at the contrast between real patients. Let's discuss about two groups of people. One group of people made only lifestyle changes. Another group of people only depend on medications and do not work on their lifestyle and dietary changes. The group number one who followed lifestyle changes and dietary changes they could reduce the amount of medications they take. Uh, people who were using five medications were reduced to three medications and further. But those group of people who made only changes in their medications and didn't work on their root causes or didn't work on their lifestyle or dietary habits, their medication do dosages increased over time. Instead of using one drug, they moved to two, two and then to three and four. So that is the power of food, which can be used either in diseased people or in people who do not have disease. So foods can even prevent a disease and can even cause a disease remission or reverse a disease in some scenarios. Prevention gives bonus benefits. Benefits. There is also another hidden truth which is food prevention gives benefits which no pill can. When you lose weight while eating better, your joints will stop hurting, your sleep quality improves, your energy improves, the risk of diseases come down and your mental health gets better. And there is one famous study by Dean Orish, Ornish where he showed that people who made massive changes in their lifestyle choices and dietary choices, their arterial health got better or even some people the vascular aging reversed. So this is the power of food where it do not give you any side effects like a medicine would give you, but in fact it will give you a lot more benefits than expected. And of course, food doesn't carry the side effects that a long-term medication would do. Like all the medications that we use have some of the other side effects. But let me tell you, medicines and surgeries are still very important when we have to deal with acute scenarios. I do prescribe medicines as well when needed. But imagine if we prevent what is preventable then the amount of healthcare burden will come down and number of people requiring emergency medications or emergency surgeries will come down. That's the power of medicine. Imagine two kinds of individuals. A person who never focused on lifestyle or nutrition just ate the food that he likes, slept when he wanted or even didn't bother about regular screenings. That person person ends up with a massive chest pain, has had to rush to a hospital and needs emergency cardiovascular support. Imagine a second individual who is very proactive in terms of preventive screenings and also takes care of his exercise, dietary changes and also lifestyle choices. By these choices, this person has already prevented the risk of n number of scenarios and will never land up in acute scenarios because he's also preventive screening on one end and also is making ideal lifestyle and dietary choices. So, which diet works best? Now, you might ask me, with so many diets out there, which one is actually the best? Is it keto, alkaline, vegetarian, or is it vegan, or even blood group diet? This is very confusing. But here is what the science says. The best diet is something which is more balanced and sustainable. The Mediterranean diet, or even DASH diet, or even traditional Asian diets, all emphasize vegetables, fruits, whole grains, legumes and nuts and moderate protein and very little refined sugar. In India, this looks very much like what our grandparents ate which is sabzi, dal, roti or even millets, curd and little fish or chicken at the end, a little desert. There is no one size fits all. Some do bread better with more protein, other, others with higher carbohydrates. The core principles remain the same. Eat mostly whole foods plenty of vegetables, adequate protein, healthy fats, and avoid excess calories. Be careful about fat diets. Beware of diet that sounds like pseudoscience, the blood type diet, or even alkaline diet, anything that says eat as per your horoscope, or this food works only on a full moon day, then you can ignore it safely. What about keto and intermittent fasting? Keto can give rapid weight loss and even short-term blood glucose control, but in India, it cuts out a lot of staple foods, are roti, rice, dal, especially it's culturally alien and socially hard, and this is unsustainable. Plus, it would risk constipation, gut problems or even can raise your cholesterol levels. That's why it should always be done under a guidance of health coach. Number two, intermittent fasting. Eating in a time window, for example, like 14 is to 10 or 16 is to 8 has shown a lot of healthy benefits. 
again it's not magic benefit mainly comes from eating fewer calories and aligning with natural body rhythms but if you fast but then binge on fried foods during eating windows then it won't help you if done properly intermittent fasting can be very very useful prevention is not about chasing fad diets but going back to balance whole foods regular activity and also eating in moderation when you choose prevention you are not just avoiding diseases but you're building a more vibrant and happy life now let's bust some myths number 1 home food is always healthy not if it's full of oil sugar or or even polished rice home food gives control but you must choose wisely number 2 skipping meals helps weight loss actually it makes you overeat later part of the day if you plan an intermittent fasting it works but random skipping can in fact harm your metabolism number 3 supplements can replace foods a pill is not the same as real food take for example an orange it has fiber antioxidants and vitamin c all work together no tablet can replace or copy that number 4 fruits are bad for diabetics not all whole fruits are bad there are some low gi and moderate gi fruits that actually work for them and are in fact healthy but fruit juices are bad number 5 vegetarian meals are healthy french fries chips or even lot of sweets are all vegetarian but unhealthy so vegetarian depends on actually what you are eating for example legumes dals different kinds of grains and nuts and moderate protein number 6 diet sodas are safe these in fact trick your taste buds disrupt your gut and also increase your cravings that's why it's not a very healthy choice number 7 thin people don't need to worry this is a very dangerous situation even thin people have fatty liver they have type 2 diabetes and can have blocked arteries so it's not just about weight it's about waist circumference and lot of other advanced biomarkers number 8 carbs are bad this is not completely true not all car- all kinds of carbohydrates are bad we find carbohydrates quinoa or different kinds of legumes which are actually good for your health here is the final big takeaway food is the most accessible longevity medicine out there if we can make few food swaps and respect our body's natural rhythm and body's clock and regularly track your health markers we can build a stronger body not just to prevent a disease but also we build future generations we are trying to simplify very complex longevity science into bite size information If you think this information is useful for you and for your family members and if you think this life saving preventive hacks can help people out there please share these videos and we are trying to do this every week so please do like share and subscribe i think it will be useful for your everyday life